Hey, what's up, guys? And welcome to episode 53 of Talk 4, the quickfire podcast where we ask four great questions to unique and interesting people. Behind the mic today is your host, Louis Scoopian. That's me. And wow, our very, very special guest for today, Finbar Clancy. He's going to be answering some questions today. Finbar, please say hi, introduce yourself and give us a quick rundown of who you are and what you do before I shoot some questions. My name is, uh, great to be on your show, uh, Louis. Thanks so much for asking me. Uh, no my problem. name is Finbar Clancy. I'm a member of the High Kings Irish Folk Group. I play uh, acoustic guitar. I play the five-string banjo. Um, I can also play the classical flute and the bass, but I don't do that too much in the band. Uh, I also sing. Um, I've been in the band, oh, we're celebrating our 15 years. Uh, together, we're about to embark on a, a world tour. We have a new album coming out. In June, a uh, very exciting time is heading to Australia, New Zealand for the first time. Uh, we tour internationally. We're heading to the States, uh, Canada. We just came back from Germany, Holland, Belgium. Uh, we'll be going there again. And like I say, uh, touring Ireland and it will be in England in June also. So very exciting times ahead. They sure are. And Anyone who's listening who kind of knows me and stuff or follows me on Instagram knows that I'm such a big fan of the High Kings. And I, I got to see you and meet you in, in London uh, earlier in the year. And uh, I'm going to Dublin in February to see you as well. And yes, you did say you're coming to the UK in June. And um, I've managed, uh, very sneakily, I've managed to... Uh, pick up front row very center seats for the bristol for the bristol event so I'm, I'm really happy about that but i'll tell you what we've had uh we've had brian on so far we've had paul on we've got finbar now the iconic voice and i've got four really good questions lined up for you today finbar so if you're ready should we crack on with question number one let's do it let's do it louis game on let's do it then right then so for my first question Fimba, um tell me about your backstory so how did you originally get into music what or who was the inspiration behind it and how did it lead to this incredible career in music excellent question um my father was also a musician his name was bobby clancy and he was in a a, a fairly famous group called the clancy brothers that toured all over uh, they were the first ones to popularize folk music in mm. the late 50s, early 60s in America. So he, uh, I grew up listening to him. I remember the, the, the story was um, when I was probably about eight years old, um, I noticed my dad used to disappear after dinner every night and he'd go upstairs into, the, into his room, to his bedroom, and you'd hear the banjo, the five-string banjo that's to be played. Mm. Uh, you know, he'd pick plock, pick plock, you'd hear the banjo mm. upstairs. And I remember asking my mother, I was like, what's he doing up there the whole time? She goes, why don't you just go up and see? And uh, see for yourself, she said. You know, and she kind of coaxed me. So I went up, knocked the door, and, you know, kind of sheepishly stuck my head in the door. I was like, well, you know, what are you doing, Dad? Mm. I was like, come in, I'll show you. And before long, he'd, he'd gotten me a, a small little banjo, and he was showing me how to play the five-string banjo. So oh, wow. I, I loved that. I, uh, I picked up my next instrument then was I, I, t <laughs> I played the banjo for a few years, now fairly, fairly simple uh, uh, picking rhythms and a few, you know, a few chords, nothing too fancy, enough to get by. And then, of course, mm. when I was, um, I was 16, I, we had a, a piccolo upstairs uh, in the attic, and I found it one day, and I could, I could blow into it, and I could actually get a, a decent tune out of it. Mm. And uh, my dad said to me, if I was to buy you a flute, would you play it? And I went, yeah. So next thing, he bought me a classical flute, and I got classical lessons. And uh, that was when I was 16. The following year, when I was 17, I decided to pick up the acoustic guitar. But because I had a um, good foundation in uh, rhythm and playing a stringed instrument at the banjo, um, myself and my cousin actually picked up the guitar at the same time. Colin Power was his name. And his, mother's, his mother uh, is the only surviving member. She's, she's turning 93 this month. She's the only surviving member of that generation that my father and his brothers were all from. Right. She's the youngest of that family at 93. Her son, her youngest son, Colm, who we all called Collie, played guitar at the same time as me. And I remember I made one fatal flaw. He learned how to play bar chords from the very onset, and I didn't. I was playing like the F. When you play the guitar F, and you can, you can, when you're playing that chord, it can be tricky. Right. You need to cover yeah, two yeah. strings with one finger, and that's what I did. But he barred it. And, of course, once he was able to bar that, then he could play B minor, he could play... 
you could play all the the G minors and all the the really cool chords. Uh, I started a rock band with him then, um, and I remember I played electric guitar, he played electric guitar, and we we literally couldn't find a bass player. We had a drummer, but we didn't have a bass player, mm. and we were starting to write songs at the time. So I, you know, he said, "Oh, you'd be great, you know, you'd be great in bass." So I was like, <laughs> "Okay, I tried it out. Uh, I liked it." And, uh, you know, we, we thought we had these fantastic songs and we we're going to be the next U2 and we recorded a demo and sent it off and nothing, nothing actually really happened. But funnily enough, one of the people that my dad said to send a demo tape to was a guy called Dave Kavanagh, who had a, who knew my dad and knew my uncle, Liam. Um, in fact, he was involved with a guy called Mark. This is going really down the rabbit hole now. <laughs> <laughs> Love it though. To make, to make a, to make a long story short, Dave Kavanagh uh, said, "Why don't you come meet me in my uh, in my record? He had a record company called Liffy Records back in the time, back in the day." And I met him in his office, and he said, "Look, um, it's not really what we're looking for right now, but absolutely keep plugging away, uh, keep sending me stuff. I'd love to hear what else you come up with." And he was the only person who sat me down and kind of put me straight. And I remember he picked up the demo tape and it was like a cassette tape. And a lot of a lot of your listeners probably won't even know what that is, but a cassette tape back in the day. And I had all the songs with the original songs written down in, you know, pen. And he was like, This is a cassette tape. This is what you send me. And I was like, Yeah. And he like holds up like a, something like you'd buy in a shop, like a CD. He says, This is what people are sending me for demos. He said, <laughs> You kind of have to put your money where your mouth is because it's, a lot of it's about presentation. You know, ordinarily, I'd almost just throw this in the bin because I think this guy doesn't take it seriously because he's not putting any real effort into it. It's so you have to kind of worry, you know, you have to not worry, but you have to be very mindful of how you present what mm. your material and you know what how it looks, everything, even if it's just a demo. So that kind of pointed me in the right direction. The whole thing came full circle, and years later, Dave Kavanagh signed me to be part of the High Kings, like. 20 years later almost no way you know almost 20 years later he was like okay the high kings and he just i became part of the high kings wow that's amazing i mean i have to say uh, for as long as i've followed your stuff i mean it's just fantastic and you've obviously been gifted with this incredible voice i'm so glad that you went into music and your dad was doing it as well it's a beautiful humble story to tell and um i'm interested then so do you do you remember what like your first song was or something or what what was the very first song that you actually kind of really took to and you, you kind of connected with on that level well i remember when i was like uh, the very first song i ever played on the banjo like when i was eight years old was like you are my sunshine you know okay. you are my sunshine my only sunshine and I left out, I left out a, a big chunk of uh, the story uh, because after I did the whole rock band thing and it, you know, I mean, tried for years to get this rock band off the ground and it just wasn't happening. <laughs> and at the same time, like uh, my dad was going through some health issues. So he had a quadruple bypass operation. Wow. And because I, because I, I played the banjo, I was 25 years old at the time, because mm -hmm. I played the, the five string banjo, he said to me, well, why don't you go on a tour? Um, a North American tour with the Clancy Brothers instead of me. And I was like, what? Are you really? You know, and it's like, I remember doing that tour and it was, uh, it was probably set six or seven. It wasn't a big, massive tour, but I remember coming away from that going, oh my goodness, like this is so amazing. I loved it so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, I just, I would talk about hook, line and sinker. These are the songs that I would have known um, growing up. Mm. Um. But it was just it was just a real, real turning point in my life. And I was like, yeah, I want to do I want to do folk music from now on. And uh, and I kind of went down that. So to answer your question, um, there was a song. I suppose my first song, because my dad used to bring me off. This is, <laughs> you wouldn't get away with it now. But back in the day, he'd, he'd bring you off to a pub, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, but on a Sunday afternoon. And it, you wouldn't be obviously drinking, you know, I'd be like 16 years old or something or 15 years old. And he'd say, OK, you can, you can have, you know, a, a glass of Coke and, a you know, a pack of crisps the or classic, something like that. You know? The classic. The classic. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like they'd have this big sing song and everyone be around in a circle and everyone have to do a song. It was a session. And I remember the song I picked to do was The Dutchman, which was a song my uncle Liam sang. And that was the song that I kind of first sang out on my own. I learned it all off. I learned the guitar off. And I sang it on my own. And that was my first kind of, 
I often think about when you're performing, it's, it's, it's stepping over an invisible line into the unknown. Uh, when you perform and you don't know what way it's going to go, but it went, it went good, thank God, and encouraged me. And it's like, just, just keep plugging away. For anyone who wants to start singing, it's, you have to start somewhere, you know what I mean? And if you enjoy it and if you can get over the nerves, and you will be nervous, but it's, it's very rewarding once you step over that line and once you, you go for it. You know, that's so that the song for me was the Dutchman. Absolutely. That's brilliant. And yeah, I mean, I had had a really good podcast yesterday, actually, with Tyler Gray. And we spoke a lot about passion and how people kind of get pushed in society to not kind of follow their passions. But but when you're young, you know what it is that you want to do. You know what, you, what it is that that you feel most excited about. And it's so good that you've gone down this route and everything. And I mean, you you started off with little group circles in the pub and now look at these incredible audiences and places that you're going all around the world to to to, to sing for and it's it's absolutely amazing but um yeah I do want to ask about the High Kings actually Finn Bar. I mean you, you touched on it briefly um a, a minute ago but tell me about you know how you actually really got into the High Kings so how did you come to know the guys and how was the idea put to you and how did it go from there? Well, I was I was um, living in America. I was living in Boston for four years, and um, there was there was a whole story of, about um, starting a folk group. Which there was a guy called Shea Healy who had he was a TV personality. He started off as a cameraman in RTE, the national it's mm. like uh, the, the national TV station in Ireland, and he ended up um, having his own TV shows and stuff like that. And he was a fantastic personality. Years before the High Kings started, I think it must have been about it must have been around ten years before the High Kings started. Shea Healy wanted to put a folk band together, and in an unbelievable connection, uh, it's I mean it's a guy he knew met my girlfriend at my cousin's gig. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and and they were going the same direction. Uh, through, like my cousin, or how am I going to say this now? I'm confusing. Um, <laughs> it was a very, a very kind of like join the dot. It was like you, you couldn't make this up. You couldn't make this happen. And he had a conversation with my girlfriend, and uh, she, he said, um, "Oh, you know, you're enjoying that the show, the groups uh, that they were going to see was a group called Dano, a tradition uh, Irish music band that my cousin was with. Mm. And my 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 girlfriend Bronya was with was with my cousin who's the sister of the guy who was in the band Breffney and they were they were talking and she introduced him just Jerry O'Connor who's also a musician an Irish fantastic uh, banjo player but he plays mm. the tenor banjo so it's like the four string banjo and he uh, had a conversation with my girlfriend and uh, she mentioned though so, that that I was a musician that oh my my boyfriend's a musician as well and he said, oh, yeah, well, it goes with she went, the Clancy Brothers. And he's like, the Clancy Brothers? Like, <laughs> <laughs> the guy's going back to the 60s, you know. He's like, yeah, his dad is in the Clancy Brothers, and he's over on tour now. Uh, he's a folk musician. He said, that's really interesting. A friend of mine, Shane Healy, the guy who has the TV shows, yeah, yeah. wants to put together a folk group. So she, you know, gave my phone number to this guy who gave it to Shay Healy. He got in contact with me. We went into the studio. We, we recorded a, a, about two or three songs with my cousin, again, the guy I learned the guitar with, and my brother-in-law, my Welsh brother-in-law, Rayland, um, Ryland Davies. And um, we recorded all these songs, but uh, they were kind of... Shay had a funny sense of humour, so I was into kind of humorous songs. Mm. But I remember one of the songs was called Rashes and Sausages. <laughs> and it was like... The, yeah, it was like, what did you have for the late breakfast? Rashes and sausages, rashes and sausages. What did you have for the tea? Rashes and sausages. It was just, it didn't really go anywhere, you know, but it was, it was kind of like, if you just let us choose some large folk songs, we could choose some really good ones. But he had, you know, he had a funny sense of humor and he brought it to a bunch of record companies and, and it didn't happen. But then I went off to America and I did my whole thing with the Clancy Brothers. Ten years later, I come back to Ireland and I get a phone call out of the blue from Shea Healy. And this answers the question about the Vikings. Okay. And he said, I know it didn't happen when we tried this before, but I've got a very good friend called Dave Kavanagh, the same guy I met all those years ago, mm. who's got a, a group called um, Celtic Woman. We're doing really good in America. 
and all over the place, and he wants to put together a male version of Celtic Woman. Uh, would you be interested? I said, absolutely, absolutely. And I knew, uh, he said, he didn't know who was in it at the time. Um, but I went and I met Dave. And we had a conversation, and when he told me who was involved, I'd met Darren years before. Darren Holden is from Moon Coin, which is probably seven miles away from my town. And he played he played in my town. He's, you know, gig around the pubs. And I used to gig around the pubs back when we were kids, you know. Small world. And mm. we, we, yeah, small world, you know, just came full circle. Um, and Martin Fury I had met because I'm actually named after his dad. His dad and my dad were like best buddies um, okay. back in the 70s. Uh, and Brian, I didn't meet before, but Brian knew Darren uh, years for years anyway through Riverdance and stuff like that. So when we just... We got together and we just went into a room and we just started singing. And we said, this is either going to work or it's not going to work. And if it doesn't work, you know, we'll see, we'll cross that bridge and we'll come to it. But, you know, thank God it did work. And the so voices, they did. As, as different as they were, they did, they did blend, you know, and everybody had, like, you know, I had, I had the kind of lower down registered in the, the bass harmony and stuff like that. And we mm. all did solo songs as well. We all did our spots. And uh, it was great. That's, that's how it started. Fantastic. And yeah, it's so true. I mean, these four voices, they're all so unique in their own way, but they all blend together so well. But I think one of the things that really, when watching you and listening to you guys in London live, not not obviously on the um, Apple Music stuff, which is just kind of one thing, but actually watching the performance, the thing that struck me the most is it wasn't just a band. It wasn't just a load of people all doing one thing, one thing, you know, just for everyone. It was this performance individually as well with all these individual songs and often using multiple instruments in in what in one song as well. I mean, you look at Paul and stuff, he's just flicking around things for fun. It's, oh, yeah. it's amazing. The talent and individual talent is just fantastic. So I kind of want to ask you then, what actually is your favorite thing to sing as a, as a solo or or with the whole band? What What is your favorite at the moment? I th- you know it comes sometimes it comes full circle. Um, I I really do like singing "Go Lassie Go" because it kind of reminds me of the times uh, I sang it on stage with my dad, and when I sang it in a pub with my dad or mm. whatever, it just brings back so many memories. And it, it means it, these songs mean so many so much to so many people as well. They're, they've they've wonderful memories of these songs, you know, from from years ago and experiences that they've had. With people that they care about and love and it's just it brings it all back so i think go lassie go is a really really good song you know? i can i can totally see how that how that would be as well and uh, obviously i wasn't i wasn't introduced to irish traditional music until a couple of years ago i actually found the irish pub song and then that just got me into all of it and and it's it's such a beautiful song i mean you play it in the car at night or something it's just absolutely incredible um yeah you guys have so many fantastic songs but I kind of want to ask you, it's a bit of wizardry and stuff, but I'm I'm such a big fan of so many of the songs. And one of my favorite ones actually is Follow Me Up to Carlo. And the lyrics are so complicated. I'm genuinely interested. Do you have any tips for like memorizing these things? I mean, how do you not make a mistake when you've got something that complicated? What's how do you memorize these things? That's a very good question. Personally, what I do when I find what works for me is to, to handwrite out the lyrics. Ooh, and great. yeah, if you if you handwrite out the lyrics, sometimes you can you can almost you know you can almost just kind of see them in your mind's eye. You can almost see it just kind of gets into your brain quicker, I, yeah. I think, if you if you write it down and, and run through it, you have just over and over and over again. Get the get the words down. A lot of times what helps as well, um especially if it's the new song and if it's, if it's something like Rocky Road to Dublin or something or learn. Like we mm. had to learn, <laughs> this is not a joke. We were, we were asked, I want you to learn all the words to Rocky Road to Dublin, right? And fill the fluter's ball, which is even, I'd say, faster than Rocky Road to Dublin. And there's so many words in it. And mm. they were like, learn those two songs and come back tomorrow. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> now, I think they were just joking or something when they said to see if we could do it. But like, what a little trick to help as well is that if you get the, you just throw it into your head. You have to run through it. You just, and it's not enough just to run through it in your head. You need to sing it out loud. Uh, you need to play it 
you need you need it to be as it's going to be when you're doing it. So I mean, ideally, singing singing a song out loud is that different than singing a song in your head. Singing a song in front of people is totally different than singing a song in your bedroom on your own. Mm, it's a lot of it's mentally. It, it's it's very different. Um, and that's the whole stepping over that line I'm talking about. When you sing in front of somebody, it's like you're laying yourself there. You know, um, yeah. you're laying yourself out. You're setting out your stall, and it's it's kind of you know, hit or miss, you know. And um, But what I find is that if you write out the first line of the verse as a little cheat, you know, if you're, if you're worried that you're going to mess up, if you get the first, even the first couple of words in the f- first line of, 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 let's say, the second verse or the third verse, Sets you on the if rhythm. you think it, it, it will just, you just get, you have to look down and just see, you'll know. Right, you know, if you're if you're if you're doing it live and you're just thinking, am I going to get it? I know I know it, but if I'm going to mess up one part, it's going to be the third verse, and that's that's the bit that catches me every time. Just write out the first line, write out the first couple of words if you're worried about it, and if you feel the anxiety of when you get to that part, oh my goodness, what's going? You know, uh, what is it again? What is it again? Um, you can just look down and you can see that line, and that will help you. That's that's fantastic advice. And if there's any musicians yeah. listening to this, I'm sure they're going to benefit <laughs> greatly from that. But it kind of begs the question then for me, a bit of High King's trivia, Finbar Clancy trivia. So what actually is the hardest song that you have to sing? What, 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 was there any of the, any songs that you just really struggled with or anything that's like stands out as just the nightmare in a way? Uh, a nightmare song? Um, <laughs> ooh. I, I don't know. I mean, I tell you what. It's, I won't say it's a night. I won't say it's a nightmare, <laughs> but it, it's it's a workout for me now to sing "Step Step It Out, Mary" because it's just it it's so fast, and there's an awful lot of "Step It Out, Step It Out, Step It Out, Step It Out," step, and it's just it it just it's unrelenting. You know, it's just one of those songs. Yeah, uh, and I'm not even singing the verses. You know, <laughs> it's like Paul is singing the verses, but it's like it, it's just it's just from the beginning to the end it's just go 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 and it's just you never stop going you know I and mean, you never stop yeah you're singing all the time and and playing all the time and it's it's a workout you know and there's songs like that that you finish that you feel like you know oxygen you know and then you, <laughs> you, uh, <laughs> and then the worst thing is sometimes then after a, a fast song like that when you're panting for breath you have to do an acapella song or something that's really delicate and it's like you know it's like Somebody speak for you know, for two minutes while I catch my breath, you know, and, and talk about something. And while you, you know, because I can't introduce it because then I'll be panting into the microphone. But um, I suppose step it out, yeah. That's 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 a bit of a workout. It's not a nightmare. It's a great song, mm. and people love it. Um, it's not a nightmare, but it, yeah, that's that's a workout. Yeah, absolutely. And and Rocky wrote to Dublin as well. Rocky's, mm. Rocky's a workout. Absolutely a workout. I absolutely love "Step It Out, Mary." It's such a good yeah. song, and it really, really gets the uh, it gets the uh, the energy up and stuff. <laughs> I can totally oh, see course, what yeah. you mean. If you if you have to sing that and you out of breath and the blood pressure in your head, and then you have to sing <laughs> something <laughs> soft, that must be an yeah, absolute, yeah. That must be so difficult. But I mean, you're you're the man for it. You're you're the expert, so you you can do it. But um, yeah, I can imagine Thanks. that must be a, a difficult one to to uh to endeavor to do but um anyway we're kind of on the subject of of bits of tips and tricks now and stuff so i'm going to ask my third question um do you have any advice or tips for people who are about to start or are just starting to get into music and um how do you decide on that first instrument and what are some of the things that you did as a beginner that really helped you develop quickly or that you wish you knew going into it well, the, the number one step is if you if you're learning guitar, learn bar chords as soon as possible. <laughs> uh, don't yeah. It took me years. I, I avoided it for ages. Um, I think you're automatically if you're automatically drawn to a particular instrument. My my first instrument, my first love was believe it or not the drums. I just love the drums, wow. and I wanted to play the drums. And I said to my dad, like, I want to get a set of drums. But we lived in a in a house in a row of houses, and he said, oh, "No, our neighbors would go crazy." This is before the days of electronic drums, and you could put on headphones and play away, which is mm-hmm. great now. But back back in the day, it was just you had to get a real drum kit, like and and you know we were in a in the center of the town, surrounded in all parts. My dad says, "No, the, 
we'd be run out of town. <laughs> he said, you know, <laughs> the neighbors, the neighbors are gonna go nuts. You know, it's like there's a young family here. There's you know so many people around us that you know you can't play the drums. So he said, pick something else. And I, I you know, I've been the banjo then. You know, it was probably the drums. The drums after the banjo, actually. The banjo just kind of stumbled into the banjo, but I really enjoyed it. Um, but I found the guitar for me. Uh, guitar and a piano. I, I would have liked to play piano as well. I think they're so versatile. Guitar mm -hmm. and piano are the two of the most versatile. You can play any genre of music on guitars and pianos. And and they're just there's just so much scope in terms of chords. Um, and especially with the piano, where you can you can change the bass code, you know, it's it's fantastic scope. Um, play what you enjoy playing. Um, I used to give guitar lessons for a while, and people would come and I'd say, um, I'm going to have to show you some scales because you have to get the rudimentaries down, the foundation. I know it might be boring, but there's a reason for it, and you'll see. Uh, you'll see further down the line. But I do want to encourage you, so I want you to come back, and I want you to pick a song that you'd like to learn how to play, and I will show you how to dissect a song, how to figure it out, and how to play it. And that's what I did. And, and that's what kept people interested when I was giving guitar lessons back in the day. So I would say, um, if you're drawn to a particular instrument, go for it. Uh, if you're drawn to a particular kind of music, go for it. Only you know what you like and everybody is different. So there's not one size fits all or one instrument fits all for, for everyone. Um, and just and just try and... If you're getting lessons, say, show me, show me how to play something I really want to learn how to play. That's what I would say. You mm. know, try try because if, if, if there's nothing more encouraging to somebody, it's 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 like you know when you play something for somebody and you don't know how to play it, but you you figure it out, you show it to them. It's it's like magic. Like and if you show them how to do it, then they're doing it themselves and they're playing a song that they love. And that might be just the chorus, they mightn't even sing it yet, but they're just so blown away by the fact they can play this song that they love so much and mean so much to them. And that's the the ultimate uh, in reward, I think, you know, for any musician. If they can if they can play something that they really, really enjoy. Mm. That's that's, that's what it's about. It sure yeah. is. And it goes back to what I said about passion as well. And if you if you go into it for a reason to to impress people or something then I don't know how well that career would would do but if you really go into it just because you love the music or you love something specific or a certain style then absolutely I mean I started with guitar and uh, I've played a few songs I absolutely love love playing it and you're right um the electric drums are great as well my cousin has one of them it's really it's a really good thing um okay the interesting question actually I just want to ask you out of interest then so let's say well I'm mostly asking for me. There's absolutely no denying that. <laughs> but if there is someone listening who is, a, a, say, a hiking super fan and they are about to start and they're going to grab a guitar or something, what do you think would be like a good hiking song to start trying to learn if it's like your first song or something and you're just picking up the guitar? Ooh, that's that's an interesting question. Um, That's a, I'd have to think about that. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, Rocky, Rocky is a tough song to learn. I mean, if you're just learning something, probably something slow. I'd imagine something slow might be yeah. easier to, to learn. So um, could be The Town I Love So Well. The Town mm. I Love So Well is a great song, fantastic song. And there's there's not a lot of chords in it. I think it's three chords. I think it's three chords. Or maybe four. Yeah. There's a few chords in it off the top of my head. Hang on. Mm. Do, 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 do. I think like four, three, four chords mm. at most in that song, and it's a nice because it's like you want when you when you're learning an instrument, you you're not going to be able to play Rocky Roads to Dublin if you're learning an instrument. You just not because <laughs> it, that's advanced. You know, you just you have to the rhythm of it as well as it's it's like a jig time. You know, it's it's really tough. But um, I would say something like uh, it could be um. Grace is another one. Grace as a quite song. song. Great. Absolutely beautiful song. Grace, Fields of Athen Rye. A lot of these songs are three chords, maybe a fourth chord thrown in, but they're nice and slow. And it starts off, you get your rhythm going. You start playing your rhythm and you have your chords. And then just, just work on the chords first. And uh, and then and then you, you know you have to 
once you're comfortable with that, you kind of try and as much as you can put on autopilot and then try and sing over it. But it takes mm-hmm. practice. It does take practice. So and another true. thing um, is calluses. You're going to get calluses on your fingers. Oh, yeah, they're horrible. <laughs> which is which is tough. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's no way around it that, that I know. Um, I just kind of, you know, a, a lot of people want to play the guitar, but they'll give up because they'll get the pains in their in the in the tips of their fingers. But uh, if if it's actually classical guitar or nylon string guitar, that's a, an awful lot easier okay. for people who really want to learn the guitar but are on the verge of giving up because it just hurts their fingers so much in the steel string. Try a nylon string; it's it's a gut string and it won't hurt your fingers as, anywhere have, near as much. I'll have to give that a go because I've. I have certainly been through this. I can genuinely say the first two weeks of playing, you'd have like an hour session of trying to get this song down and trying to get these chords down. And then you just look at these red raw fingers with string lines <laughs> in them and you'd just be like, ah! <laughs> so it's, it's, a, it's a tough one to get through. But yeah, you need to, you need to build those calluses. Actually, I've got, I've got another little question actually about this too. Um, It's an interesting one and something I didn't find obvious at all starting my guitar journey and stuff. So when you, when let's say you have a song that you really want to learn for me, actually, that would probably be like the Irish pub song. I, I love that song. It's my number one song really at the moment. Absolutely love it. How do you actually find like the tabs and, and, and the chords and stuff for these songs? And if it's not obviously, obviously available online and stuff, is it something that you just start to kind of, learn but and recognize it like the sound of it and stuff as you kind of get more advanced or experienced or is there a certain way to kind of get hold of the tabs of difficult songs and stuff that you want to learn but don't really know where to go with it well there's this guitar tab um websites and 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 apps and stuff like that but yeah i know what you're saying mm. for hiking songs or for songs that you don't know um I don't really know. I can, I can tell you that I'll tell you right now the chords of the Irish pub song if you want. Please, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, it's capo up five. Okay, okay. You start off A minor, which is I'll, I'll just give you the names of the chords up five. So it's A minor. You'll be walking through a city street. C. You could be in G Peru, and yeah, A minor. Hear the distant call and then you E minor. No, it's meant for G U. Then you <laughs> drop a G or do an A minor, C, G, A minor, E minor, A minor, E minor, A minor. And then the chorus is C. Uh, they got one, 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 one. E minor. It's for the. No, sorry. <laughs> I am confusing myself now. G, sorry. <laughs> they got one, one, one. Yes. They've got one of. Hallelujah is G. They got four of them, A minor, and then and Kathmandu and one Kathmandu, whatever. That's E minor, G. Or, yeah. Oh, that's, anyway, that's, that's... <laughs> you did, I'll tell you what, I you, did a, you did a pretty good job there, all things considered. That's difficult to do from memory. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll definitely I'll definitely give that a go. I have to listen back to it and probably make some notes of it and everything. Um, but yeah, I guess that just keeps going around and around and around then, then doesn't it? That's a little, That's a little it. cycle. Okay. Perfect. That's it, yeah. Pretty much going around and around. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think you can hear for the changes. Like if it's if it's songs that are that are that that's been if it's a song that's been done before, there'll be chords to it already. So it's just a matter mm. of kind of what what I do whenever I figure out a song, uh, and it, this again comes back to the theory. If you know your theory. Uh, which is a B flat B C C sharp D E flat E F mm. F sharp G G sharp back to A again. On any string of the guitar, you can pick out. Uh, you can find out the key of the of a song of a given song from the string. So even from the low E string, whatever it is, you slide it up the neck, and then using what I did, the A B flat B C C sharp, you can find out what note that is. And then what note that is, then you have what key it is in. And then you know what chords are in that key and the relative minors. And it's just, that's it. You can work it all out on the Brilliant. chart. Thank yeah. you very much. I'm I'm yeah. certainly going to give that a go. I'm, I'm looking forward to it, actually. But you, while we're on the subject, I'm, I'm, I'm actually interested. I mean, it's such an iconic, iconic song. I know it's one of your all-time best performers, the Irish pub song. I'm interested then, do you, when you were actually making this 
did you did you feel like there was something special about it did you know or kind of expect to do as well as it did or was it kind of a surprise going going into it when it exploded like it did it was i mean i thought it was it was a great song absolutely mm-hmm. and it was it, it wasn't even supposed to be on any album it was it was kind of just a, a video um a, a promo video for the hikings and just <laughs> oh, this is the hikings and here's the song and that the video that's still on youtube now where we're this kind of the black and white video and mm. it was just put out there as a song um to kind of promote us or just to just to do a video really of a song mm. and uh and next thing people started asking for it and it's it's got 25 million uh downloads on spotify now you know so it's like it's it's massive it's huge and every time we play it and people ask for it every night so it's just we had to record it then so we stuck it on the album and uh you know sometimes these songs i think pubs as well something about irish pubs and, and wherever you go around the world you'll find an irish pub just people kind of like the notion of that yeah you yeah, know yeah. and it and it's funny i mean it's like wherever we go it's 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 so stereo- stereotypical it's like a home I mean, from home thing, isn't it? It's kind of got a homely vibe to it. That that sort of an idea of like wherever you go, there's going to be this place that's that's part of your home yeah. and your culture, isn't it? It is, and it's it's kind of it's almost like a, a joke at this stage because it's like people going on holiday. It's like oh, I want to go off to this lovely exotic location, and the first thing you do is like, where's the nearest Irish pub? Or where's the nearest <laughs> English pub? You know what I mean? It's like yeah, you yeah, get yeah. there and you just want to go. Oh, okay, enough of that. Now I want to see something familiar straight away. <laughs> Or just see what the Irish pub is like, see what the English pub is like, you know, or what it's like in that location. And we do it all the time when we're on the road, you know, when we're over in Germany, Holland, and Belgium. Like we'd go, you would have a day off, and we're like, okay, let's see if there's an Irish pub. And, and there would invariably be like, you know, five or six or 10 Irish pubs in any given place, like, which is great. Okay. I'm going to test the theory now. I'm interested. Have you ever been anywhere around the world where there wasn't an Irish pub? <laughs> Um, I'm sure I was. I mean, I must have. I must have been, but I can't. I can't for the life of me think of any place that there isn't. There's so many Irish pubs. Um, somebody was in. Oh, where was it? on top of a mountain in Macedonia or something? There was an Irish pub. Well, so I, 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 I like you know, it was like they're all over the place. You know, I mean, there's so many of them everywhere yeah. you go. It's true, you know, and it's. Just, I think that's what captured the imagination because. People are listening to this song all over the world, and wherever they're listening, there's probably an Irish pub not too far away from them. That's true. You know? So true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's why I think to go. I, I went to I went to Milan recently, first kind of holiday in 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 a, in a few years, and I'd had all this sort of build up time during the COVID stuff of listening to the songs and and building the theory up. So I land in Milan, and first thing I do was Irish pub near me. Yeah. There was one when they had a great pint of Guinness, and I was just, I was so smug sitting there, just thinking they were right, they were right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a great thing. Um, yeah. I, I love it. It's, it's, it's a nice notion. It's a happy song. It's fun, and um, and and it's, it's cheered up many a many a rainy day for me. But um, Fimba, yeah. um, right. So for my fourth question now, then, um, this is this is going to be an interesting one. It's it's a deep one. Um, so. What has been the most memorable or some of the most memorable moments in your career that you feel are perhaps the pinnacle of your career or most heartwarming moments with the audience and fans? Was there anything that, that really stuck for you? Absolutely. Um, every now and then, um, I'm trying to think of something. I mean, there's, there's like things that you do and you just think that was that was really nice to do that. I mean going to the White House and playing for the president or going to Arlington Cemetery, leaving a wreath at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. I mean, there's things that you don't... I mean, we played in St. Patrick's Day uh, in Trafalgar Square and then went on a plane and met President Obama, the, the, you know, the next day. Oh, and things amazing. that you'd never... You, things that you'd never do if you weren't doing this job kind of thing. Um it's not even that there was like one particular time, but and a bunch of times you'd be singing a song and everybody would just join in. And there's just a lovely energy between, between the audience and yourself when you're singing a song. And it's just, it's just mm-hmm. a moment. So every now and again, there's these magical moments that are just kind of sprinkled across 
a bunch of uh, different uh, performances throughout the years. Mm. I, I guess I just think it's it it's it's not even that it's one particular. It's just it's more of a feeling that you get. Um, and and it could be something like go go lassie go, or it could be something, um, all the time. Of course, with um, Tony I love so well. That's such such an iconic song that there's there's such it electricity is, yeah. in that song between between the audience and, and Darren when he's singing it as well, and and everyone has those songs. You know, I mean, when Brian sings Grace, there's one of those moments when we sing when when Paul sings Caledonia, it's gorgeous. You know, all the guys mm-hmm. have these songs that they sing. But they just it just touches the audience like touches their hearts and mm-hmm. uh, and you and you feel it you know and of course when we do um the parting glass is 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 the big one you know when we mm-hmm. when we sing the parting glass at the end it's 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 kind of taken on a life of its own um at this stage so that's about as good as I could do for an answer for that Luke. <laughs> that's brilliant no I mean the thing that really really sticks out the most for me about about the Irish songs and the songs that you perform is that, yes, it sounds brilliant. It's so nice to hear. It's uplifting. It's happy. Obviously, most of the songs are. Some of them have a kind of a sadder touch to them as well. Um, but the thing is, they all have so much history attached to them. They all have a story. And in some ways, it's such a good education thing as well, isn't it? Because then you hear the lyrics and you think, I want to know more about this. You know, wh- where was this place? What happened here? And then you start to look into it. And there's yeah. so much so much culture involved in it and i have to say i can't believe you got to play for president obama i mean that is such an incredible thing and just out of interest then what was his favorite song that you performed do you know did he say anything about it like what was the obama review of the high kings well i i i don't know what his favorite what his favorite song was i did he, he didn't say my favorite song was <laughs> <laughs> sure yeah uh i i don't know what it was I, I I wouldn't venture to guess, but I think I know he enjoyed it anyway. He, he was definitely certainly smiling through the concert and uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, and, and just a lovely a lovely person as well. Just a really nice, warm human being. A nice nice guy. You know? Yeah, he, he's he's great. And yeah, you can always you can always tell with people. Some people who get into famous positions or have super success and stuff you can kind of smell it on them when they they've let it get to them and everything, but he's so down yeah. to earth and he's so, you, you know, you see the videos and stuff of him kind of interacting with people and you just feel like he just knows that we're all the same sort of mix of, of blood and bones yeah. aren't we at the end of the day, but he yeah. just happens to be, you know, or was the president. So yeah, it's yeah. a, it's a very, very fascinating trait. And Fimba, I just want to ask for the last thing now as well, what's next for you then? So you, the high Kings, What's coming up for you? I love the music. I cannot wait to see you. Is there anything to report that uh, that that you're working on? Absolutely, we have a we have a new album in the works. Um, that's going to be released. We're thinking of around June. It's going to be released. Uh, it's going. It's, it's very exciting. Um, we're, we're doing. We're we're going to new territories as well. Like I said, Australia, New Zealand. I mentioned, which we're very very excited about. It's been in the it's been in the pipeline for a few years and we wanted to to go before now mm. with the whole COVID thing kind of yeah, scuppered yeah, that yeah. plan. Um, but, but we're back on track now. So that that's really exciting. That This new album is going to be, um, I think it's going to be a game changer. I think it's going to be really good. Uh, we, there was conversations had with, with young uh, singer-songwriters and bands that are well-established in Ireland. And, um, and it was kind of, okay, let's hear if you can write a folk song. And mm. uh, and with some with some very very interesting surprising results, some of them came back with fantastic songs. So That's we've been great. getting in the studio and recording these songs and and uh, getting a bit of a beat behind it as well, but not changing it too much. But it's just it's 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 an exciting sound. And mm. uh, but but it, it but it is in fitting with everything we've been doing as well. So we don't want to completely do something completely different than what we've been doing so far because what we've been doing so far has worked so well. Uh, and we want to continue to do that. And we want people who like what we do now to, to continue to like what we do <laughs> once we come out with this new album. So I think it's going to be very, very exciting. It's going to be an extremely busy year. It's pretty much going to be a world tour. We're going to be all over the place. And uh, I'll never complain again about working too hard for <laughs> the last couple of years. <laughs> haven't been doing anything and was just itching to get this thing rolling again and now it's finally rolling again so very very exciting times ahead 
Uh, mm-hmm. Encourage everyone to check out the website, thehikings.com. We'll have all the details, all the tours, everything will be on that. Mm. Um, and it's just going to be a really, really exciting year. Yeah. Absolutely. No, you guys are so busy. And yeah, last thing I want to want to mention as well is that I saw this little sneak preview clip. Um, I think it was yesterday or the day before, and it was where you guys were in uh, in in Dublin, and you were doing a a, a song with I think it's Sharon Cor. I think that's how her name is yes, said. Yes, that's right. Yes. This this ten fifteen second clip. Oh my god, it sounded so good. I had it on repeat so much. I'm just interested. Yeah. Can you give me like a rough time frame from when we can expect to to see the full version of that? Because oh my god, I just cannot wait to get it played. <laughs> oh well, that's 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 a uh, Sharon Core from from the world famous Cores uh, from Dundalk uh, in mm. Ireland group, uh, who are they're going on tour. I think uh, they're going on tour next year as well. So next year is going to be a big year for the Cores as well. Um, that's a tune. That was written um, by the group, and Sharon is on board, and she's playing the tune. I don't know when it's going to be out. It was a little tease, but we had a great day in the studio with Sharon. Mm. Um, we did some recorded, we recorded a, a video as well, which will be out in due course. I think we're going to kind of start drip feeding you these little videos <laughs> now and again. <laughs> uh, stop it! It's so painful. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I honestly don't know when when it's gonna drop. Um, we have we have Connemara Bay has been released in Ireland, mm. and that's been doing really well. And uh, there's another song, "Chasing Rainbows," is our second uh, single that's out. Um, and that's with the group, the Script, uh, an Irish group called the Script, that are really, really a great group. Uh, they wrote that song. Um, Wild Youth uh, wrote the first song, Connemara Bay. Um. It's just exciting times ahead. There's just lots of stuff going on. I don't know when when you'll, but that's a great tune. That is a great tune. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, I mean, you'll, I had, you'll enjoy that. Yeah, I had the headphones on and, um, like I said, just had it on repeat. And, oh my god, it's such a good vibe. I cannot wait to to hear the whole thing. But um, oh, anyway, yeah. Finbar, this has been our four questions for today and a bit. Um, and before we wrap it up, it is time for what I like to call the shameless plug. Um, you already mentioned the website, but yeah, just take a minute and promote anything that you're working on. You want people to take a look at or just something you believe in. I know you mentioned that you've got the high Kings, uh, dot com, um, social media as well. Anywhere for people to go and, and, and follow your stuff. Well, I you know, uh, Darren, uh, and Brian are very active. Um, on, on all forms of social media, mm. I'm I'm just I'm just an old curmudgeon, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I can't handle this, <laughs> you know. I, I'm the I'm the uh, the the interesting recluse of the band. <laughs> it's it's funny you but, should say that because this the story the story between me and you here actually for people listening as well is that I've I've tried to have Finbar on the podcast for so long. I've seen your your Instagram account and I've I've sent these messages and they never got picked up. But I thought. I must be banging my head against a brick wall here. So I asked Paul and he was like, oh, like six months later, oh yeah, he doesn't have social media. I was like, for God's sake. That's, I know, yeah, I know. I know, I, I know I'm a dinosaur. I know, I know people are like, what? How could you not have social media? I don't know. It's just, no, I don't know. I just, I don't know why. I don't know why I should, I should be, I should be way more proactive. And I know, I know how valuable it is, especially to a group to, to be on social media. It's just, I'm, I'm so bad at it. I'm so bad at it. <laughs> yeah, someone it was set up for me, and I never. They were like, "Here you go," and I was like, "Okay," mm. and I just put all the codes in the drawer or something. I never took them out, so I haven't checked, and I apologize for that. <laughs> just contact contact Darren Bryan or Paul <laughs> <laughs> on social media <laughs> to get yeah. to me. He's sticking to his strengths. We love to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so um, much fantastic stuff well Finbar I just want to say thank you so much for your time and thank you for joining me today for the Talk for podcast it has been an absolute pleasure having you on and a true honour thank you so much Louis it's great to talk to you Absolutely. and I look forward to seeing you I look forward to seeing you uh, when you come over to Ireland in February we'll Hell get yeah. together and have a nice chat okay buddy thank you Let's so much do it well thank you guys for listening this has been episode 53 and if you'd like to listen into our past episodes make sure to hit that subscribe button and also we've got some great people coming on soon too as well um loads of good things happening so like i said hit the subscribe button spread some love leave a comment leave a like let me know what you thought go and follow these amazing people and we are signing off for now see you later bye